Okay, so without further ado, I am bringing on Sydney Powell. I am so grateful to have her on the show today, and I know you are too. And we're going to ask her about something very interesting, something that just happened on Twitter, Big Tech, and are they shadow banning Sydney Powell? Sydney, I am so grateful to have you on the Sarah Carter Show. And I just want to say this, the American Guardian of Justice. There could not be a greater compliment coming from Lieutenant General Michael Flynn because I think he is an amazing man, an amazing patriot. I've known him for such a long time, and I've seen him out in the battlefield even when I've been in Afghanistan. So your fight for him, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you because I believe it's a fight for all Americans. Thank you, Sarah. We have felt that way too. This case is so important to the rule of law and General Flynn appreciates your support throughout all of it and that of your listeners and audience. It's just been enormously uplifting to receive all the prayers and notes and encouragement and contributions to the Mike Flynn Defense Fund, everything. People all across the country have helped in every conceivable way, and we have felt their prayers. You know, it's really interesting. Before I get into anything else, you brought up something really important. So many people have reached out because a lot of what people don't understand is that Lieutenant General Flynn has been, he and his family really have been fighting for years now. Their finances were depleted. They had to sell a home. They, uh, special counsel, uh, Robert Mueller, the former special counsel, and Andrew Weissman and them threatened his family. I mean, so much that you have done to expose the truth here. And that's very important that the American people started to see what happened. And they said, whoa, wait a minute. Here, let me help out. Let's fight together. Yes, they really have joined the fight. And it's so important because if they can do this to General Flynn, they can and have done it to many other people as well. In fact, I just learned recently that the National Registry of Exonerations, which maintains a database of anybody they're aware of that's been completely exonerated but was accused, over 20% of that database was people who had entered pleas of guilty but then were completely exonerated. The, the whole machination for, uh, quote, criminal justice is such a, a grinding machine that it destroys people. In fact, Harvey Silverglate and I have written a new book called Conviction Machine that includes some stories from the Flynn saga in it as the gr most egregious examples of government and prosecutorial misconduct we've witnesses, we've witnessed, and then we propose some solutions for them also. That's incredible, Sydney, because you really have been a fighter for justice long before. I mean, you fought Andrew Weissman. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, that was a that was a huge case for you, and your book was huge. It still is. Yes, License to Lie, Exposing Corruption in the Department of Justice. I self-published in 2014 after years of dealing with and seeing the prosecutorial misconduct that arose from the Enron Task Force, of which Mr. Weissman was the head. <clears throat> for a number of years and just destroyed the lives of innocent people in Houston. And I wrote about it in License to Lie, trying to wake up the public to what I saw that was going on, people literally using the law as a weapon to achieve social and political objectives or just to destroy people for their own agenda and self-aggrandizement. I mean, I don't really know even what motivated the conduct of the Enron Task Force prosecutors but it was hideous and it was contrary to everything I was taught as an assistant U.S. attorney myself for 10 years in three different districts under nine U.S. attorneys from both political parties, not a one of which would have put up with the conduct I saw from those prosecutors for two seconds. And then we saw that same type of conduct, that same malfeasance in, uh, you know, with Andrew Weissman during the special counsel's investigation. I mean, it didn't stop. It didn't stop with Enron. It went on, right? Well, it's, it's, it's like what we're seeing in the streets right now. If you don't stop it with the first brick thrown or the first whatever, it's going to do nothing but get worse. So right. all of this has to be brought to a stop right now. I mean, I tried so long and so hard to get the word out. But it wasn't until he came on the Mueller task force and started targeting people like General Flynn 
And then I came into that case that people could really see what was happening on a national level. You've you fought so long and hard and the evidence that you've been able to gather this exculpatory evidence that was withheld from Flynn's defense. And he had a bad defense to begin with until he, you know, until he got you and dumped his first, you know, the first defense team he had. But is so egregious, Sydney, that when people look at these Peter Strzok, you know, text messages, handwritten notes, uh, what the FBI did in their investigation to basically set up and target Mike Flynn when he was the national security advisor for President Trump. What they did is so crazy that I always say this wasn't their first rodeo. This, what they have done to President Trump and Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, both the FBI and the DOJ, they must have been doing this all along because they thought they could get away with it. They've done it to more than one person. There's no doubt about that. They tried doing it to Senator Ted Stevens, and that was under the Bush Department of Justice. I mean, I consider myself an equal opportunity offender, licensed to lie, crosses the Bush and Obama administrations. And because nobody's ever done anything to rein it in until Bill Barr, I think, is now starting to try, it's only gotten worse. And it's Do you been think there's going to be justice? It's been you- getting worse and worse over 20 years. Do you think there's going to be justice here, Sydney? I mean, there has been justice for Mike Flynn. I believe that. It's well, going to come. Well, not quite yet. The case isn't over yet. So what do you think is going to happen? What can what can Sullivan do? What can they I, do to I, fight I, back? Yes, um, I really don't know. This is uncharted water. I've, I've never seen a case in which a respondent was allowed to seek rehearing on his own because the judge is not supposed to have a dog in the fight. So I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is he hasn't entered the order yet that he was ordered by mandamus, which is an extraordinary writ. It's a direct order to the court from the Court of Appeals to sign the order of dismissal. They did not remove him from the case, which gave him a chance to save face, but he hasn't taken that opportunity. So I have no idea, but we're right now we're just waiting for that order to be signed or for the Court of Appeals or the government to take further action. Is this political, Sydney? I mean, has this gone beyond just the normal rule of law? Do you believe this is a fight for the future of this country? Because I feel like there is a war brewing in our courtrooms, in our bureaucracy, not just on the streets, what we're seeing on the streets, but within our own government. I feel like there is a battle that is bigger than we have ever imagined. There is, Sarah. There is a complete battle as to whether we're going to be the constitutional republic we were meant to be or descend into the chaos of mob rule and anarchy and destruction. Uh, Those are the basic choices. And you believe the government is people within the government, people within the government, because I'm not going to say everyone because we know that's not true, but people within the government have targeted this president and this administration and are fighting back tooth and nail along with those former officials like John Brennan, uh, James Clapper, James Comey, Andrew McCabe. Are, they have their people still inside their agencies. Do you believe that they are fighting this president and your client, Michael Flynn, still to this day? And Attorney General Barr. Yes, I do, without a doubt. I mean, they call themselves the resistance. It's the first time in our nation's history since the founding that we've had anything like that go on. As far as I know, other side, both sides have eventually cooperated, accepted the result of an election, and, and gone about to work with the other side as best they can. Nothing like this has happened, certainly, in my lifetime. No, and it hasn't happened in mine. And it's really, uh, it's a very frightening situation because it seems so different. It reminds me so much of other countries I've traveled to, you know, not the United States of America, where we do have that peaceful turnover and people accept the election and then they move on. We're not seeing that. Go ahead. What it shows us is how entrenched the corruption and financial benefits were for those in power before President Trump came along. He is trying to disrupt all of that and restore confidence and uh, the economy and jobs for the American people that he was elected to represent. And those people all right now need to stand up and demand 
that he restore law and order in the areas in which it is gone now. We've seen long enough the, the rioters and the protesters and the Democratic mayors and cities fail. The president needs to step up now and do something about that, make it stop, because the American people are counting on him to stand up for them. That's what he's always done best. He has given voice to things that every American thought but didn't have the courage or the ability to voice to the public forum. And it's so important that he step up and do that again now. The American people really want and need him to be a strong leader by more than tweeting right Right. now. Right. I agree with you 100%. And I wanted to even expand on that. You said he's the disruptor. I believe the American people, you are the disruptors. You are the disruptors that voted him into office because you weren't happy with the establishment and what they were doing and the games that they were playing with all of us. And that's what they continue to do. I think they're so angry, Sydney, because people like you have exposed them, have exposed their innermost secrets, their text messages, their emails and how they operate. And they are just losing their minds. And John Durham right now and William Barr, they, along with you, are the only two right now. This Justice Department, that's it. The buck is going to stop at the Justice Department is the only place that they can hold these people accountable. Do you agree with me? Yes, I do. I mean, people elected President Trump because he represented the American values they want to see restored in this country that we were founded on, that we all know and love, and we welcome anyone here that wants to be an American. And that means accepting our values, accepting the American culture that we have created, whether it's baseball or apple pie and and, (laughs) you know it's just it's part of it's like baseball (laughs) apple pie the american flag the national anthem the um what would change right now i have a great story here where they want to change our national anthem to you know john lennon's you know song i mean this is this is insanity it is insanity and people have got to be taught again children must be taught again to respect authority and property Well, how do we do that, Sydney? Because right now I want to bring up something that's important before I have to let you go. And I I know I've got like maybe five or six more minutes with you, but I want to bring up something important here. Twitter, Google, the big tech, Silicon Valley, they are at Facebook are constantly controlling and monitoring conservatives. I never see this on the left, not the same way. And when I went to your Twitter account today, we were on your Twitter account it was a big warning sign. Uh, Jenny contacted me, Jenny Tear. She's like, did you see this? Did you see what's on Sydney's uh, Twitter account? It was a big warning sign, like warning people about you and your content so that it, that it would literally scare people to click on your Twitter account. Wow. That, that's, it's just crazy. What do you have to say about that? I knew nothing about it. I I woke up to that this morning. I think I've gotten that resolved now. I actually went on a Twitter rampage yesterday to stand up for America, to stand up for honesty, for respect, for decency, to protect our statues and our culture, to protect our freedoms, individual property rights, you know, everything that America was built on. And that's what comes of it. We also destroyed the New York Times article that came out yesterday that was a bunch of abject lies about our case and how we conducted it. Uh, Molly McCann, my associate, did a brilliant rebuttal of that on Twitter, and of course I retweeted that. So I don't know. I also tweeted that Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organization, which you can see by the video of their founder. It's not something I made up. And, and anything, any group that seeks to rule by mob and destroy anything in this country, any property, any statue, anything. I mean, I was raised that you don't touch property that isn't yours, whether it's a, a laptop left on a seat in an airport or whatever. You pick it up and you turn it into lost and found, but you do not do anything to harm anyone else's property or public property. And those who do should be severely punished immediately. We've got 100%. to restore American respect for other people's property and persons. That's absolutely right, Sydney. There's other ways of handling disputes and disagreements. 
You know this because you're a lawyer. You take it to the court. You take it to the city council. You go to your elected officials. You say, hey, guess what? I don't like this statue. It offends me. Could we talk about it? Let's have a vote in the community and let's move it to a museum. I don't know. Let's do something with it. Or maybe let's leave it because it's just a part of our history. And that's that. It doesn't mean anything. We're not doing anything. We are just remembering what happened, what brought us here as Americans. We can't forget that. And no matter who it is, I don't care if there were a statue out there of of Lenin or Hitler, we need to know who those people are and what they did and leave those statues alone. They are works of art. They uh, solidify our history and, and visualize our history. People need to know who they are, whether they were good or bad, and how they feel about what those people did and represented. But that's why they're there, to remind us all of whatever you want to take from it. But they need to remain untouched because they're not anyone else's property. Right. And then you're going to have, but you know, you have the cancel culture, Sydney. You've got a cancel culture that you're up against. Cancel the cancel culture. That's what needs to be canceled. (laughs) We're going to cancel the cancel culture. That's true. As far as Lieutenant General Flynn's, um, what, what happens? What's the next step? What can people do? Uh, in order to keep the fight going and keep this fight alive? Well, right now, I would just say pray that the District of Columbia Court of Appeals has the wisdom to stand up for the rule of law and let the decision that the panel wrote remain. It's very well analyzed, completely grounded in the law. There's not a single case on the other side that supports doing anything other than dismissing the case against General Flynn on the government's well-documented, substantial motion that can be seen at my website at sydneypowell.com, where we've also put the other pleadings and exhibits. For anyone who's saying anything negative about General Flynn, it's all refuted in the exhibits attached to our motions, and everything is explained there. You know, and before I let you go, last but not least, what can Americans do right now you think in order to get their voices heard i mean the elections coming up in november what do americans need to do to be actively involved you know we're involved in covid right now a lot of us were afraid there's going to be another lockdown this has been something you've been tweeting about but what do we do now i mean do you think there i mean for most of us we're wondering what can we do the elections coming up and most people aren't going out most people aren't actively involved We need to write and call all our elected officials at all levels to stop all the nonsense, whether it's demanding that masks be worn, which don't even work. If they're not an N95 properly fitted mask, they're not going to ban bar germs in or out. And nobody has a right to tell people what to wear like that anyway. It's ridiculous. Um, And we also have to take much more responsibility for our local elections. You know, George Soros has been very active in getting in district attorneys that will subscribe to this lawlessness and mayors and local county officials. He's worked at the local level with a lot of money, especially in the larger cities. And those are the ones where you see the biggest problems, where they're they're letting people out on bail. They're just processing them through or without bail. Uh, not holding them in custody despite violent acts like the even Molotov cocktails, which ought to carry an extremely strong penalty because that's arson. We saw that in New York City. We saw that in New York City. Yeah. Nothing should be allowed to be burned in public, period. That's You talk about a health hazard and a danger to the community starting a fire, whether it's in a trash barrel or anything else out in the middle of a street or sidewalk is extremely dangerous. all the nonsense needs to be brought to a screeching halt right now. And I think President Trump is the only person who can do it. And that's what the people want him to do. Well, coming from America's guardian of justice. Um, thank you so much, Sydney, for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. I know I'm taking some time from you. You got a lot of work on your hands still. The fight's not over yet, but I really hope it's over soon. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you for all you do. 